Go ahead. There you go. Now we can officially start. There it goes. So I'm going to call the meeting to order and we'll do attendance. Jessica Sargent. Here. Doug Williams. Rick Murphy. Okay. Maggie, can you? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm here. Maggie Vishnu. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we're actually going to skip approval of minutes because I don't believe we. I didn't receive a copy. <laughs> um, oh, because we had a workshop last time. Correct. I didn't, so, okay. I'll have to send July minutes around. I, that's my fault. I didn't even think about July because in August we had a workshop. So we would have still need to approve the July minutes. I totally missed that. So um, yes. I will send that to the next meeting. I apologize. Uh, I do want to highlight, though, I believe that the recording is online, so it's yes. it's not as though the information is not available. It's publicly available yeah. on the website. We just do not have minutes to vote on today. And again, totally my fault. Um, I'll take care of that. So um, moving on to the next agenda item, it is now time for public comment. Do we have any? one who wishes to comment publicly. Nothing here in the audience. Uh, online, Sue, I don't see your hand, hand up. Any comments at this time? Okay, seeing none, I think we're, we're good. Seeing none, we move, we move forward. So I was hoping that the bulk of today's meeting would be on the parks and conservation by the numbers fact sheet. Um, and I thank everyone who provided information as it, re as it relates to their assignment uh, for the fact sheet. Now, I think Todd has the most recent version. It's also available in the Google Drive um, of where we're at in the, the pulling that together. So I'm just gonna sort of go through the numbers unless people have questions. I know I'm remote, so it can be a little challenging. So I'm kind of expecting Todd to interrupt me <laughs> uh, if, we, if we need to have uh, more discussion. So we think that we have consensus that it's 1,166 acres of fields, forests, and marshes that have been protected using land bond funds. Is that the statistic that everyone agrees we should use. Alternatively, we do have 1,346 acres that have been used, been protected using town funds. So it's a little bit of a distinction in that there were appropriations um, prior to the land bond. So we can either use the 1,166 1, acres via the land bond or 1,346 acres using town funds. Which includes the land bond is those funds too? Yes, which includes- uh, Just to be clear, that's not additional. That's including land bonds. Correct. Other sources, okay. And I think even if we find it slightly confusing, <laughs> that could be confusing to others. So it's it's hard. It's, you're correct. It's the land bond plus uh, appropriations that predate the land bond. What is people's feelings? I, it really depends on what the intention is of any given version of this report. If we're trying to look at conservation land acquisitions over time, then it's the total amount. But if we're looking at the impact of the land bonding activity, um, then it's everything from 2001 on. I'm, I'm partial to the 2001 on at this point simply because we have so much discussion going on and issues uh, with the land bonding, um, I think we should be talking about what was done with funds uh, from, from the bonding. 
I, I agree. And we do make a point of, of the leverage. So I, I think the total amount makes, and the only question I would have makes sense. The only question I would have is, would anybody call us to task on that? Would anybody say, wait a minute, that wasn't all. I can't yeah. imagine anybody would. Yeah, right. I think it depends on how the report is titled. <clears throat> Jessica, could you remind me again what we settled on as a title? Our working title is the Parks and Conservation by the Numbers. Well, Parks and Conservation goes beyond the land bond. And so I feel that acquisitions that predated the land bond would be valid to include. And also, you could include other initiatives by others, but for our purposes, I think the bigger number is probably valid as long as the report is titled Parks and Conservation and not Parks and Conservation Land Bond. So if we go with the former, I'm fine with using the broader number. What's the purpose though? What's the purpose of including stuff before the land bond? Well, I think he's just saying, and I and I agree with what Rick's saying in the sense of, I think depending on the title you could do and you, you know, the title states one thing. I I agree with Doug and I agree with Rick. I think my mind settles in the middle where we change the title to parks and conservation uh, use of land bond or something. You know what I mean? And just stay with the 1166 because if we're confused about what it is, I agree with Jessica too. You know, I think that's what it is. 1166 is money as acres just purchased from the land bond. But we would need to tweak the title a little bit just to reflect that one piece if we were going to do that. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we, we did Sewell Woods and Liberty River. The town had nothing to do with it. Nobody from the town had anything to do with it. It's strictly the land trust. You know, it, it had nothing to do with conservation. So it just happened to be that we would right. discover a land conservation trust and we were working on those properties. So those two were included in the 1346? They're included in total. That, they're the only two that are prior, that are prior to 2021. Then to again. avoid any kind of confusion or overstatement, let's use the smaller number. And don't worry about the title. To answer your question, Doug, what's the purpose? Our immediate purpose is to provide information so that taxpayers can make an informed decision about how well we have stewarded their funds. Beyond that, I think the initiative to conserve and preserve land, open space, parks, conservation lands, habitat is noble. And I think that it's a, Sorry, the result of a partnership that transcends just the municipality or even just the land trust or others. I think that it is a community-wide initiative that deserves some credit. And so I'm hoping that we can take this work and use that to build a storyboard about the entire initiative, the entire effort to do our good conservation work. And so I, I wouldn't want confusion to result because we had a very narrow definition of acreage preserved here and then go to a big, bigger program uh, storybook down the road where we push out on a website that it's a different number, but I'm fine e either way. So my goal, my own personal hope is that we get past this specific targeted yeah. purpose, which is the election and use this to, to build essentially, a, you know, a, di a right. diary that says, here's what, here's what we've done and here's what we continue to hope to do. And it's, yeah. it's bigger than just this committee. Jessica, can I ask a, a follow-up question not to confuse us anymore? Because um, as I hear different comments, I keep thinking different things. And I think I got two things in my head that I need us to settle. One is doing this two-page fact sheet simply to help prior to the election, you know, the amount of acres, blah, blah, blah. Are, are, are we talking about that? Or are we talking about the report? Because in my mind, I'd like to see us that 1166 number that acres, that's where the money's been used for the land bond. I'd like, I think keeping that two page document about the land bond and how it's expended. And then I think if we're talking about the report, 
that I think we, we add in a bigger number because you can give more space to, to you know other areas because it could have been donated. It could have been given. I mean, when they finish the open space plan, we might find other parcels in town that were given to us as part of um, developmental purposes and different things, and that's all going to get pulled into. The, well, we're space. calling it the storybook. So yes, that's the that is another item on our agenda. I don't think that we're going to dive too deeply into it, but that is another piece. And I, I think that there might be things that are discovered through the open space planning process that find its way into the storybook. That's a much longer um, time yes. frame. Yeah. So we have time to, we have time and space in the storybook to tease out the nuance. This is a fact okay. sheet. Okay, we don't so really fine. have time and space in a handout yeah. to dive into nuance. Well, let's, let's just take a look at, you know, what our, our fact sheet is and, and what it represents. If we're trying to tell a story of conservation, that's one thing. But if we're trying to tell a story of parks and conservation by the numbers since we had the yeah. yeah. then you can keep you can keep number three in there. But if we're if we're talking about what has happened land conservation over time, um, then number three comes out. It's irrelevant. It's not valid. So the way that I think about it is the Parks and Land Conservation Board was created after the first land bond. So I view this fact sheet as um, how we have stewarded conservation through our charge. And so I'm taking the narrow view that PCLB is putting out this fact sheet to inform the public on how we have stewarded those funds, which would be the 1,166 acres. Because we, as a board were not involved in anything prior to 2000. While the town has a long history and has done lots of things, that's not anything we have any standing over. Gotcha. Explain that way, that makes total sense to me. So this is a fact sheet produced by PCLB about parks and conservation that, <laughs> and essentially that we do. <laughs> well, and I, I do think that it's, I think it was Andrew that was saying this needs to be placed and the storybook as well in this larger strategy about conservation in general in the town. And that it's, as you said, a worthy goal. Uh, but at the same time, so that a lot of things have come together, maybe that's in the storybook to move conservation forward. And we're doing our piece, but there are other. Yes, there are other pieces. There are other pieces, and that'll be in the storybook on how those pieces fit together. Mr. Rick had his hand up. Rick? Yes, sir. Did you raise your hand? No. Oh, okay, sorry. Waving. Oh, okay, sorry. He was waving. <laughs> <laughs> I get good peripheral vision. And did uh, we get Noah? Did Noah want to weigh in? Sure. Yeah, I guess first, sorry, sorry, I was late. I was out with Scott looking at a, a land trust property um, for an event coming up. <clears throat> oh, are we specifically talking about number three? We are talking. We're still on one. <laughs> okay. We're still on, we're, we're on number one. Doug brought up three in the sense of how it reflects. So we're trying to decide um, the 1,166 acres is the amount of acres that land bond itself has been used to yeah. allocate versus the other one has other resources attached to it. Yep. Yeah. That, I, I love it. Yeah. So stay with just the one six, the one, one, six, six. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. what the money has been used for. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Be direct. This, yeah. I mean, that's an incredible number. Yeah. It's great. That, that should be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need to try to augment it beyond that's, that's the true number. Yep. Please. So do we have anyone who's vehemently opposed to 1166? I think we can move on if if not. Hearing none, we're moving on to two. <laughs> Keep moving. <laughs> Which I believe should be straightforward. Three historic sites preserved. Any discussion? My, my only question about that is if we want to name them. I don't know that we'll have this space, but we could certainly name them if space allows. And so they were sister and land with land on funds. Yes. So yeah, they're part of the your your purview. So 
but I'll make a note when we're looking at the layout um, but recommendation to add the three names if space allows. Any other discussion related to two? Moving on to three. I, looking at this number, I was, my reaction was over $7 million leveraged as the text, but um, I don't know how, if folks want to stick with the percentage. Um, and then uh, if so, I, I delegate, I delegate to Doug uh, if the 49.5 uh, works, the, if you agree with the math. <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable with 49.5. I think that's valid. Um, I'm not as comfortable with the 1166. Um, so I'm going to have to check that. I, I, based on the spreadsheets that Scott has developed and that I've worked on trying to pull these together, um, there's, there's something that there's some stuff that's not being included in the 1166. That I'd like to take a look at it. Maybe it may be the easements. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I, so I just got to verify that before we finalize it. You think this okay. is possible? I do. I think the one with six inches is lower. Gotcha. Yeah. I, but I, I'll, I'll have to go back to, I mean, I've got some, just got a spreadsheet here and I don't understand how we got the one with six, six on, uh, using land bonds. I, um, except for the fact that it may be a couple of these that didn't use, that had town funding, didn't use land bond funding. Um, that's probably why there's a difference. So I think the numbers probably correct under the assumption that it had to be land bond funds as opposed to town funds. Gotcha. And, and we'll just verify that. So Jessica, for the point of this exercise, can we decide, so when I meet with my staff again about blocks and how many we need, does this board want to use whatever the validation of, again, talking about 1166 right now, just for validation. Are you looking for a percentage for leveraged funds? Do you want percentage and the total numbers? And then Doug can do his his uh, accounting to make sure everything is right. But which way do you guys want to see it on a fact sheet? Right. Do you want to see the percentage, the, the amount? Or the percentage and the amount, and then we will finalize the numbers based on the data. Yeah. Let me ask a question while 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 we're talking about this because it's so key. The difference, the primary difference between the one one six six and the number I was looking at, is Fuller Farm. Um, now Fuller Farm uh, was done uh, prior to the land bond, so that was. But what's interesting about Fuller Farm is that it was done with town appropriation. The other two, prior to us, uh, Sulawitz and Libby River were not using town funds. Um, so Fuller Farm falls into an interesting category if you're trying to look at what the town has done through funding sources to conserve land. Because it's a big one. And it's public and it's the most used by the public. <laughs> you know, that's on. So uh, the, it just raises the issue. No, it's not. Is it it's not land bond, but it was town appropriation. I'm not really sure. Yeah. To look. I agree with Rick's yeah. original yeah. concept of you know, we, we need to do a report that shows everything that's been done. I think that's important. But if we're talking about town and, and that's a big issue that was raised right. uh, by a number of people, is is you know towns don't do this, towns don't do this. Yeah. Well, towns do do this and they do it all over the place. And we've been doing it. We did it before the, the land bond. Uh, it's just another way to appropriate funds. Jessica, I think that hearing, because I think that's a valid point. I think it'd be worthwhile for staff when we talk about how many blocks to find space somehow to put that total number of acres preserved by town funds to delineate it somehow so it doesn't confuse the land bond and have them both. Just to kind of, because if we include those parcels, which I think is a valid comment, I think it just makes the math a little fuzzier as we go down the line. Um, it may be worth just saying that once again, if we're using the 1166 land bond, 
1346, one block in this thing, you know, total acres preserved by all town funds allocated, just to highlight the total amount, which would include that the full of bond. It's probably a valid point to worth the block because it, then it includes everything and people aren't confused. I agree. It's completely valid. The reason why we keep going over the numbers is it's important to highlight the town investment and it's important to understand the land bond and context. So both are great numbers and we want to include both. So let's include both. <laughs> yeah. I think we we just, blocks. I think we do two blocks. Yeah. You know, if you look at this, at number one, you say acres protecting using land bond funds, 1166. Acres protecting using town funds, 1166 plus 180, that's yeah. Fuller Farm yeah. by a appropriation. Yeah, I think we can do that. And it paints a whole picture of the town. So that, that's it, that seems difference. Okay. And I think you're right. It's important to highlight the history that this predates the land bond. This is not. It's so funny to talk about it as new, right? Since it's 2000, but you know, the, the town has been investing in conservation um, for a very long time and it protected important properties. So let's highlight it, not hide it. Okay. We'll add that to the total count of blocks we're looking for at the end of the day. Yes. So I think we go back to, do we want a percentage or a total? Both. I'm hearing and we both. could, we can do both. I don't think that that doesn't take up lots of space no, to do. It doesn't. I mean, and when you say leveraged, do we should we have a? Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Should in that slide or another slide have the total amount of money invested so people understand that you know we've invested this much through the land bond and we've leveraged this so they can see how. Versus, I, I love percentages, but percentages don't always paint the, you know, sometimes it's easy for people to say, oh, we've leveraged, you know, 14,000, you know, 14 million to get seven million or 14. I, I agree, Todd. I agree. I think putting something in there to, um, you know, of the blah, blah, blah amount that invested, um, we, you know, we were able to bring, uh, I, that's too many words, but, um, <laughs> um, but um, bring in 7 million. I think that's quite a, um, that's quite a, a remarkable figure from other funds. Right. I guess, I guess I, um, maybe I'm really nitpicking here, but are people going to know exactly what leveraged means? I mean, that it's brought in for, that it's money that's brought in from other places because of our investment we could use match match by yeah is match by um more straightforward than leveraged it is to me but match matched with um it is with, yeah i'm match. thinking of a normal person that doesn't deal with this stuff day in and day out and I think in a longer report, you can use the word leverage and have an opportunity to define it. <laughs> Todd. Yes, right. I think um, in terms of leverage. Just, so just to, yeah. to bring us back to the purpose of this is a two-page flyer to help people understand what, what the $6 million is going to be spent on. That two-page flyer has a bunch of blocks, right? And this is a block, about the size of a cell phone approximately. Yeah. So probably the simplest and most visible way to articulate that is with a pie chart and the legend on it would be the total amount. And then the percentages are gonna pop right out at you because it's gonna be color coded. So you can easily put both of the numbers in there for detail, but the picture is what's important. So I, I agree. would say put it all in, but put it in the form of a legend you'll have to have a title on it saying 49.5% leverage. And I, I do prefer to use always the lower numbers just because I don't want to be overstating things. Now, that's that's my, my feeling. So we'll put both 
and Doug will confirm, will finalize the values. He's nodding yes. Okay. And then I've got the note here to legend, pie chart legend to show, again, people absorb knowledge in different ways yeah. and then we can, we can yeah. try to multitask out that. Perfect, thank you. Number four, partners in funding, 20. I'm not thinking about adding a plus because we, uh, there are projects that we don't, that we, in the past that we might not know the full extent of the partners. So we have 20 confirmed that you could find out. I know, oh. uh, as a matter of fact, that, that comes from Scott. That's so Scott. We'll have, okay. to, um, we'll have to verify that. I have, I, I think it's the way that, that uh, he's looking at them. So I, I'm sure it's correct. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. But those eleven include things like state of Maine funds, and there's four or five the pockets. Yeah, I mean, does those sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> um, Maine Community Foundation, Farmland Trust, Natural Resources Council, then private foundations. So there's there's room to maneuver in there. So we'll just verify that. I think that. Um, that the number 20 is, is accurate given the assumptions Scott's making about yeah. it. We'll just want to see what that is. Yeah. And again, I think Rick said it. If there's any doubt in our numbers or any of our calculations, I would rather see 18 plus mm -hmm. than 20 plus if we're not, you know what I mean? I'd rather have yeah, no, we'll, one we'll, or two spots. We'll just, I'll just verify. Them. Okay. So but I will make sure there's a block for that. I do like to see the names of those partners listed because I always like to give credit to people that have contributed and helped. And I think it helps to reinforce our relationships with our partners. So I feel like they ought to be listed if, if, if it's possible. So I'll make a note if possible. And again, a, a, a block like that on an eight and a half by 11 could be uh, vertical versus horizontal and stacked up. And again, it yep. may be that the numbers in a 13 font and the words are in a the, the names in a 10 font, but somebody could blow it up digitally and see it. So right. we'll see what we can maneuver there. I'm wondering if some of those partners that you don't have are a like single large donors. I, oh, we need to be a little bit sensitive about that because right. some people do not want to right. have their names published. And that's why I think the plus thing is we know we can have the organizational donors and then plus, you know, Cover that up so people don't feel like because there are significant contributors, and, but they tend to be some of them want to be quiet about it. Yeah, yeah, really. I kind of like to have a list of the quote unquote top public yeah. funding sources, you know, yeah. um, as opposed to private. You know, but we, we can have a catch on private, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah. maybe, but um. You know, the purpose of this is not to explore how land trust raises money. Uh, we're really listing, I think, should be listing some of these big names, yeah. even if we don't list them all, of public funding sources that have been, have participated with the trust and or town in this. In some of these, trust wasn't, was involved, didn't, didn't raise right. funds. Um, so, and I think that adds value, but I don't. I don't think it's our purview to cover other. Yep. Yeah. Andrew, do you want to speak to this at all? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's important to list private individuals by name. I think it's just the idea that private individuals contributing. Um, I know um, Scott didn't have all the match information, like for Maine Farmland Trust. Uh, and there was a substantial amount of match from the town, too. Uh, state funding went into Higgins Beach. Um, so there are other sources that we're just not aware of. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine to list foundations and uh, state or federal programs. And, sure what the importance of listing individual donors are. The only 
I guess the only caveat I put out there for consideration is that if a family entity, organization, trust, whatever, donated land or money to the town, not to the land trust, the final or any one of those other organizations said, hey, you know, uh, and I don't know if it's even true, you know, I'll, I'll qualify for any of these parcels. Uh, I'm, I'm donating my 50 acres and only charging this much. I don't even know if we want to dive down the that. The town has ever done that. Okay, then we the don't know. The see pieces of property as part of development. Uh, yeah. And then usually try to transfer them to the land trust gotcha. because okay. they want to maintain them. But there are still some pieces, I think. Andrew, I'm asking, but I think there's still some pieces of town owns that came to it um, as part of development operations. And they oh, yeah. The town contains a lot of those pieces that are restricted through those subdivision processes. Yeah. So um, those are going to those are going to be identified in open space, right? Okay, right. Perfect. The open space plan will cool. make some recommendations on yeah. what to do with those and other right. developed town parcels that don't have those limitations on. Them. Okay, and that covers that. Over the years, when I was on the land trust board prior to professions taking over, um, we turned down a couple of pieces of property like that the town wanted to transfer to the trust because they were. Very, very difficult to manage. Right? There were liability implications and all kinds of things. But they were donated as part of the development. Yeah. So they get the strip along the water over here and the strip over here. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for that. So, so I think on. we're going to move on to five, but I think we're not going to be able to include it because we don't have the data. And I don't anticipate we'll have the data in a timely manner, which relates to um, species and habitats protected. I, I do not think that we should be including trying to count species. That is uh, a grave mistake because there is no chance of us having any semblance of an accurate count and like actually representing what, what we're doing. There's absolutely no chance of it. There are so many things out there that we don't know are out there. And um, it's just an incredibly complicated conversation that is, um, yeah, yeah, that's my two cents. I'm kind of referring to know or dive on that. Every time we talk to the people in the state or people in the state come in to talk about the uh, habitat maps, they are very quick to say, well, you know, there might be something there. Yeah. Nothing is, nothing's perfect. Right. No. So, I love the discussion of the cocktail. There's always cocktail somewhere. You know, we're trying to protect cocktail, but nobody's nobody sure. Maggie's got her hand up. Yeah, thank you. Is there a way to, I hate to take us back on this list, but is there a way to just, in a general sense, say something like, uh, you know, this many acres, including, and, and of course, something about the species and habitats that live there? So that you, you've addressed it in a general sense, but not trying to say how many in, in numbers. Yeah, I species. think that makes a lot more sense in terms of trying to um, either name or quantify the, the types yeah. of habitats rather than what's actually in those habitats. And I, I, I feel much more favorable to that of saying, you know, we've conserved what I'm, I'm making a number up here, you know, 15 different critical habitat types in, in Southern Maine or something like, something like that. Um, yeah, that, that to me- just, be... just to pinpoint, to remind people that it isn't just the land, it's all the, the species that live on the, you know, it's the wildlife, and just to remind that we include that in our conservation strategy in a general sense. So we're we talking about a type slide now, types of habitat. Oh. Well, that's that's the challenge, right? It's like how granular do you want to get with this 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 idea? Um, because there are, I mean, frankly, there's in the scientific community disagreements about some what what some habitats are or are not. And so that that also changes it. I mean, you, you're going to base it just on soils. You're going to um, there's 
so many ways you can go on it. Um, but I guess the, the maybe the broader question is how could you actually get that information? Is it, it's not, if, if I remember right, it's not really well specified on our evaluation sheet. What are the exact habitat types, for example, on every, every property that we've reviewed, right? So I'm a little anxious about thinking about how that data would be gathered. I think but, that was the purpose of um, the later, we go to nine, which is stream banks, marsh, wetland, because those are included in our evaluation sheet. And so I think that the limitation is that um, we only have that information. GIS has really improved over the last 20 years. So we really only have that information for the Scarborough Land Trust properties, not some of these early, um, you know, that, that information just, these were paper maps up until you know, recently. So we don't have that information currently for all of them, but we do have the, the information from our SLT properties. What, what about, um, what about blocks, um, pieces of land of X acres plus, simply because from a conservation standpoint, from a habitat standpoint, you know, the, Larger blocks or contiguous pieces of show more value. I mean, that's another way to look at it. Conserve 30 blocks in excess of 20 acres or 10 acres or whatever. Uh, piece. I'm, I'm not really sure what the number what the cutoff is. And I'm not I'm not going against what Jess just suggested. We would have to try to pull that out of the assessments for the properties I um to be a manual process because there are five, I believe, five different habitat types as part of the assessment. And I know I don't have access to all of the applications. It really lives with Sue. Um, and, I, you know, volunteering someone who's not, <laughs> not at the meeting to pull together information. Doug, are you, maybe I'm not fully understanding what you're saying, are you um, suggesting adding like, so 1,166 acres um, and representing X parcels with a minimum size and a maximum size? Is that what you're talking oh, about? Oh, no, no, I was, I was talking about an alternative to this particular statement um, about uh, species and habitat uh -huh. or to say, you know, in, to, to addressing species and habitat, we protected the land bond participated in protecting X number of blocks of land of at least 10 point. Major habitat areas? Well, you know, I mean, I isn't it true that a larger, you know, 20 acre piece is better than an eight acre piece from the standpoint of like habitat? For sure. So, for sure. And we're just looking at the things to point out. So yeah. it's pointing out the fact that across these properties, there are 15 pieces that are at least 20 acres. Uh, does that have any value or is that waste? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I was just trying I, to- I like the idea of having some part. sort of, you know, again, the, the, the protection piece. You know? I just don't know how to quantify something we can then build up. Well, we could talk about, we could just highlight um, a, a group of thoughtful species rather than trying to quantify the number of species. We could list a few species that like, this land has protected habitat for these animals, including, you know, everything, and then list some things that people yeah, generally recognize. know and care about. Would you be able to send that to me? Like, could you do that block? Data wise, um, yeah, I, mean, I, I could I could come up with like you know things like little brown bat and book trap. That's what I'm saying. If we said know, white tailed you know, deer, you know, protected, you know, protected species, and listed a few. I think know. this is what Maggie recommended a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to give her credit. Yeah, that, so. yeah. No, I I think we dialed down to simplify just pe things people recognize. They're not going to rec you know a handful of those. Yeah. Yeah, such as. 
Yeah. I, I such as, as yes. In general, okay. such as. Okay, just making my own notes here. Suspected species, such as. Okay. And back to that larger, I, I think it's as we think about these, wherever we can pinpoint pieces or, or strategies about conservation, like wildlife's included, it, it isn't just land. And different, mm -hmm. uh, the more we can, that that speaks to our larger strategy of of our conservation in general. So that we're bringing that back to folks as gotcha. they read. It's not just the facts; it's the larger framework. Like it. Thank you. Sorry, I was running out of power. I came inside. <laughs> I had to come inside. <laughs> um, so I think we got enough to be dangerous there, Jessica, in your transition. No, will give us like a, a handful of highlighted ones for such as. Yes. Okay. And I think that's important. It's making the connection. Why? Why is this important? Yep. All right. So we're ready to move to six, six which is three working farms protecting 383 acres. Any discussion related to either of those numbers? Moving on. Uh, public day. act. Almost like Doug said. Oh, Doug has enough. Okay. I'm asking Andrew, we still paying for the farming. I'm surprised, yes. Well, I don't, what, what do you, I know that hay, hay in this generous term, it's being cut. Yeah, they're just cutting the hay. It's being it's cut, being run as business. Right. They have the ability to take the hay if they want it, but okay. depends upon the let's, let's keep it to the condition okay. of it. Because yeah. it's working farms and that's no, yeah, just not want, some contract. It's not for a fact. Yep, nope. All right, Jessica, we're good. You muted. I know, I was trying to unmute. Sorry. Oh, because I turned my mouse off when I brought it inside. Okay, so <laughs> this is Rick's. So Rick sent me public, public access provided. Rick, you had 17? Yes. And Scott has 18 conservation properties and two historic sites. Yeah. So I leave that discussion to you, Rick. First thing, thank you, Scott, for helping me assemble those numbers. Uh, I'm not sure why Scott came up with 18. He may have included um, historic sites that I didn't put in my numbers, but I'll I'll just give you the detail, and then you can decide. Um, first, I had a question about Fuller Farm. Fuller Farm was not land bond, right? That was appropriation. Well, that is included in the 17 numbers that I have. And so if you want to be a purist, we'd have to six, eliminate that and go with 16. And then there was a 91 broad turn, which actually is close to Fuller Farm, right? But I included um, that as a separate one. Because, uh, that's what I meant, I'm sorry. Um, that was... Uh, a separate acquisition, so I did include that. And then Broad Turn Farm, Blue Point Preserve, the original parcel was the Witten property. Those are contiguous, but I've identified them as discrete acquisitions because they were actually, they were different acquisitions yep. at different times. And they each have uh, access. And then there was Higgins Beach, Muzzy Road, Comstock Farm, Pleasant Hill Preserve, plus the extension on Pleasant Hill Preserve, which I listed separately. Warren Woods plus Libby, probably a 196 Gorham, plus uh, zero Gorham Road slash end of Finch Way, 80 Beach Ridge, Silverbrook 1, Silverbrook 2, Jarvis, and Frith Farm. 
So if we remove Fuller Farm, because it wasn't technically land farm, then that comes up to 16. That's where I got the number from. Scott um, argued that we should add in some historic sites. This question's about whether there's ready access to those or whether the access already existed. And so I didn't include them in the number. 16 is a good number. I think it's I think it's accurate. And does that include if it's 16 conserve in the in this sheet it said two historic does an historic in that as well? No. 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 And then Rick, we have, would it be sorry, fair to say um I don't think this is the right terminology, but it's it's new public access, you know, not not, not existing. Um, do we want to make that clarification? Because if it was, if it was, if the historic properties already have public access, that would be maintaining public access. Well, for example, one of the historic properties was the arch, which was relocated to Memorial Park. You can't really call Memorial Park a public access acquisition through the land bond. So I felt it was a little bit inaccurate to, to make that. I, technically, it does have access, but it wasn't through anything that the land bond did. Well, I didn't know that that arch was moved from using land bond, but it was moved from private property. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't accessible before. After the land bond purchase and the re and relocation, I, I know I'm, I'm quibbling here. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not sure I'm not sure that there really was public access to the marsh unless you walk down to the arch. I mean, you could back in those days, you could walk out there, but it was private property. Um, so it, it, the land bond uh, helped uh, to make it more accessible. The fact that it's in one part, you shouldn't be clear of that. That's, that's another issue. I could defend the 16 with very little argument because it's in the papers. That one's vague. I don't know that I'd be, I don't know that it's worth having to make, to have that argument. 16 is a good number. 17 might be more accurate. 18 might be more accurate, but 16, I know we can defend. Thanks, Scott. So the arch is one of those three historical? Yeah. Alder Hall is yeah. two. And what's, yeah. the, what's the third? Uh, it's Beechwood School, right? Beechwood School. Yeah, Schoolhouse, which may have access at some point. But yeah. today, I don't think it does. The so. Historical Society. It's not even, well, some of the money was ours, but pretty sure we can, we can defend the 16 easily. The others probably should be included, but I don't think it's worth the, worth the argument. Reason. So would the text be 16 provided public access? I just want to get the, the, the text matters in how, you know, how we, do, well, we decide the number. So be 16 provide public access? Is, is, Rick, is that your recommendation? There would be 16 public access points protected. Point. Okay. 16. Okay, gotcha. Is it parcels or points? Well, we went with you, points. I, I right. said points because I suppose parcels could have more than one access point. Oh, gotcha. So six point, 16 points of public access secured. Is that what you said? Yeah. That, that includes each. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. 16 points of public access secured. And, and it also technically includes properties that are now joined together, like Pleasant Hill Preserve and the new Spurling extension. But it was um, multiple actions. It was multiple acquisitions. Yeah. That, I think there's more than one access point on it. Maybe Andrew can help me out on that. But anyways, I treated them as a different number because they were actually different applications, different sellers in some cases. I like defendable. 
I agree. I, I, I think 16 is a very strong number and um, the list that Rick provided is very robust and defendable. So yeah. I, I think that's a great, I think it's a great number to be proud of. Maggie's giving a thumbs up. Are we good with that number now? Yeah. 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 We're good on this end, Jess. Great. So that Excellent. moves on to a, a public access adjacent in my mind, which is miles of trails secured. And so Scott provided the 11 miles. And I know Scott's now in the room, so I don't know. I want to invite Scott if he wants to provide any background as it relates to that 11 miles. Scott, do you have any comment on that? We'll just um, we're on we're just reviewing the, the bullet items for our back sheet. So yes, uh, let me let me open up my document that I put in. Gotcha. Perfect. <laughs> And I believe the text that we agreed on last workshop was, if, if it is 11 miles, 11 miles of trails secured, created, and connected. That's on the other document, correct? I don't have to remember. That's on no, it's right here. Where am I? 11. Oh, can you trails secured, yeah, yes. Number eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we are discussing both the the value and the text, because the the team is going to take that text and put it and do the design work. Yeah. So I just want to make sure people are comfortable both with both with the value and with the framing text. So the yes number of trails. So that included um, Broad Turn Farm. Fuller Farm, Blue Point Preserve, uh, Pleasant Hill Preserve, Warren Woods, uh, and there's one other one for uh, see what the what about the one at the end of Saratoga Lane? That's it, Hemlock Grove. Yes, HG. There you go. Yeah. What about the one across from this first farm? Sewell Woods. Sewell Woods. Um, I did not get Sewell Woods in there yet. So Sewell Woods, let me look that up. Sewell Woods wasn't was the land. Oh, so that's right. Sewell Woods no. wasn't a land box. Oh, is that right? Okay. That's right. That's why I didn't put that in there. Yes. You have a trust it, but you don't know, really not. And the Sewell and Libby River. And Scarborough Wildlife Park also was not land by, right? Uh, it wasn't. So um and the Hemlock Grove one is is actually it's it's the um the Habitat for Humanity property. It's the the one that the town purchased the affordable housing one. So it's not the part that we own. It's the part that the town owns that gotcha. we trails on. Yep. So the eleven miles is over. But no, you just kind of do your fingers up. Was it seven or six parcels? That was seven. Seven parcels. Three, four, five, six. Six parcels. Oh, two, three, four, yeah, five, right. six. Take, yeah. out, take away the ones in Sewell. Sewell, yep. It, I guess my question is, does it, does it, for that block, and because it's not a big block, is there any value to say 11 miles over six part, different parcels? Does that bolster, I mean, does that paint a better picture or just 11 miles? 11 simple miles. 11 miles, okay, keep it simple. You know, the one uh, that I didn't put in there, now that I'm thinking about it, is um, the Jarvis, Jarvis property. Uh, that was used for the land bond, and the state does have a little tra short trail on that one. There's a trail on it. Uh, you know, it's probably like a half a mile, something small. So I don't, you know, I don't know how significant it would add to it, but um, you know, maybe eleven and a half miles, something like that. Uh, and I can see if I can pull that up. Uh, but that would be another one that has a trail on it, and see if I've got. Uh, I just want to be cognizant of time because, um, well, I'm on vacation. And <laughs> two, you know, I want to make sure we do have some other items. So can we agree on the concept with confirmation from Scott related to the, the value? Let's go with 11.5. Uh, and have Scott because, confirm that? Yeah. 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 Okay. So 11.5 with confirmation from Scott. 
and then because I think we have a bit to discuss as it relates to number nine. Um, and so number nine, as you uh, folks recall, was sort of the thought on the long skinny uh, block, which would be multiple, right? It would it'd be multiple statistics. Am I, am I thinking that right? Where it would be um, 8.5 miles of stream bank, 1.2 miles of uh, marsh border, and 570 acres of, I'm guessing it's wetland, but I'll ask Scott to confirm that. So um, just sort of opening that box. Yeah. Yes, 570 acres of wetland, correct. And I think attached to this, like below, if, if folks don't know what the long skinny box is, we do have an example sort of down attached to this Word document if you need it. And these values are also from Scott and only include SLT properties. So again, I would be in favor of using plus because um, we don't have the data for every parcel currently. Gotcha. So 8.5 miles, 8.5 plus miles of stream tank, 1.2 miles plus of, of marsh border and 570 acres plus acres of wetlands. Okay. Scott, I have a question if you don't mind. Sure. On uh, feet of stream bank, okay. does that count both sides of the stream or just the length of the stream? Do you think the length of the stream? Okay, that's that's good. And I just did a measurement on the um, trail of Jarvis, and it's it's sixteen hundred feet. So that's what is it about a third of a mile? Then let's go back to just eleven, eleven miles. Well, you got to count the stairs up to the top of the tower. <laughs> How many times? Yeah. Um, up and down. Right? Up and down twice. Yeah. So eight will go back to 11 miles. Nine, I've got those data points here. We're using the word plus. And that is, is the title of that block going to be protected? Like, what do you want that header block to be on this one? Preserved, protected. Secured, stream bank, stream bank protected, marsh border protected. Yeah. So I was right. thinking big word up top, protected. And then yeah. one point five. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Yeah. I'll highlight that block as to big letters. Yeah. It lifts the down underneath it. Right on. And then the last block that we have discussed is number of visitors. And thank you to Scarborough Land Trust again for providing the their um, visitation statistics, which are annually 64,500 visits. Again, this is an underestimate because it's only one of the ma many applicants um, that were funded through the land bond, but uh, we just don't have data from all of them. Like we don't have car counts from the Higgins Beach, Beach parking lot. Right, so again, uh, number of visitors, uh, annually, six four five five zero plus, or I don't. I mean, well, we'll have to reference the interest properties. Well, we could we could do that with a footnote. Don't, yeah. I mean, don't because that's you know it's really understated. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I mean. It's trying. Is there a way to say you know because yeah, Higgins Beach. How many people go there? Right. It's a wild underestimate. Yeah. yeah. Just use a footnote and say Scarlet Land Trust. Okay. Is there any oh, oh go ahead. I was just saying would you would you the community services kind of operates the Higgins Beach? Yeah, yeah, we don't take daily counts. We I could tell you how many day passes we sell. I can't tell you how many season passes we check in. And then I can't tell you from 5 30 to 8, and I can't tell you from five to nine when the lot closes what that visitor count is accurately. Gotcha. Um, it may be something to consider in the future, putting a uh, car count for the summer 
over the entrance to see what that looks like. But the person that goes in should have a little chip. Yeah. Pretty soon our cell phones are just going to be able to dang up. I so I'll put the note here, SLT properties. I'm also going to make myself a note call Karen Martin. Uh, because she's been working on some GIS some technology data stuff that we might be able to pick up. Can we say something about the critical access to Higgin Beach? Or I don't know critical is the right word, but um, could we highlight that separately? Because do people know that the land bond was used for that? I would say most know. That might be worthy of its own block. I think it's worthy of its own block. Maggie, I'm okay. sorry to get to cut you off. She no, had I, I was going to introduce another topic. I'm going to let you finish this. Rick just said, Rick's. Too. I would skip that. I would not. Doug's expression, that. and Rick said we'd skip it. Um, I see both. Let your toe. Yeah. <laughs> so the, you know, the thing is that, that I, I don't disagree with, with Rick's sentiment on it because, you know, talking about something that's you don't have any clue on, you know, it's always a problem. Yeah. However, uh, that was a $500,000 plan bond contribution. It was, it was a huge thing. Plus, there were a whole bunch of other funding sources that got involved with that because you know it was a million to two million one fifty overall. So it was a big piece, and somewhere it, it it might make sense if we're doing a fact sheet on Fox Conservation Land Bond. Right. Um, it makes sense to reference it somehow in a meaningful way. How about putting it in the number seven block? I think that's a great example, right? So it'd be 16 public, I'm getting the text wrong, 16 public access points provided, including Higgins Beach. Yeah. Or such as? Well, I, you, you can if you want. I wouldn't muddy it up. I would try to keep this simple. Remember, the attention span of a, from me, going to look at that flyer, I would just want bullet points so I can make a decision to move on. Um, I think it gets too busy when you start making, when you use a sentence as a title, I think a title should be more like a headline and more like a picture, an image that just pretty, immediately pretty. infers what, what you're getting at. Higgins Beach is a story. And the problem is, I mean, it was a great acquisition. My recollection is it was actually a bargains purchase too. I don't, I think we got that at a discounted price from market value, though I don't remember that for sure. I'd have to go back and look at it. What? No, we didn't, and the owners took uh, I, you know, I, big tax rate. Yeah, that, I, that's why it was a bargain sale. Okay. Um, but, I mean, because it's incredibly valuable the property, and it was, it was two or three lots, whatever it was. <laughs> It, yeah, it was it was a it was a big story. It was a compelling story, but it, it's it's vague. It's difficult, and it. I mean, it's also, though, though the, the number one example of how parks and conservation and bond funding is used for something besides conservation. Yes, it is. It was more for recreation, beach access. Yeah. So, but so people are trying to decide whether it is fit value to me. It's important to understand that this is more than a conservation bond. So would it be fair to title a box of beach access? I mean, it's not access, but it is parking. I, I don't know. I, I never will pick up. So. I, I just think having it on the fact sheet somewhere in an appropriate way. Yeah. Yes, you're right, Doug. You're right. And I, I agree. I, I think public access slash public slash beach access and then include Higgins Beach in it for number seven. I'd... Yeah, we can either do it that normal, way. Normal people or are, are people who don't deal with normal people, people who don't deal with this day in and day out are going to aren't going to make those fine distinctions. I don't think I think it's if it if it was a big chunk of money, they should know we spent it on something like that. Mm -hmm. Personally. Yeah. How, how do people feel if it if we could put it in its own box? We include the box, and if it if it, if we don't have space, it goes in seven. Sure. Let us How's mock that? it up and see what we come up with. 
And because I think it will also have a nice visual. It's already in seven. Well, no, but what what Maggie's idea was was sixteen points of access, including and then and then an apprentice underneath it, including Higgins Beach. Okay. Just to highlight it as a. So I'll see what we have for space, and then you guys, when you get the final draft, can kind of visualize what it looks like. So I have one other thing, and it goes back to the title. Um, could we put, could we go up to the top and just, oh, look, sorry. Yeah, 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 parks and conversations by the numbers. I would put the years we're talking about oh. 2000 and blah, blah, blah to 2024. So people have an idea uh, in their head about what period of time we're talking that in this period of time, this is what we did. Yep. I can see that. Parks of conservation by the numbers and then parentheses 2001 to 2024. Is that what I'm writing? I think that's also neat, as in tidy, when we update this someday in the future or we have the storybook that, you know, it's chronicled. Yeah. Because if, if we do the, if we update this every year, then we can say 24 to whatever. I mean, yeah. I don't know what, where we're headed with this, but I think it's marking the time period gives people an idea in their head. It's really 2000 to 24. Your copy is included in there. Okay. So in approval or pending. Yep. So 2000 through 2024 is the range. Okay. We'll add that in there. So I think that we have gone through all of the points. And we're ready to move on <laughs> yep. because we do have some uh, other discussion points, but I don't want anyone to feel like they have other contributions that they wanted to make uh, before we move on. And I've chatted with my staff. We'll start blocking that up. And I think I made mention to them just quickly about your idea of having real pictures and trying to look at different things. And, and again, I think that they looked about trying to find because one of the examples we saw is some beautiful graphics, but they weren't graph. They, my staff said those are graphics that were specifically created and designed for those areas because you saw the different type of wildlife and geographic highlights in those. So they are thinking we might be able to get some pictures and then have a colored block with the data in it. And that way we don't muddy up the picture. So that's, I think, what our first crack at it for you is going to be is a picture of something and next it would be the block or if it's a long horizontal block, there may be a header picture on the top third of it. The bottom two third would be the data. Because when you manipulate those images yourself, it um, it's hard to put data over the top of it. So I think that'll be our first crack for you. Oh, that'll be excellent. We're, I'm sure we have some wonderful photos. Yes. Yeah. So again, then we only need to get like eight to 10 versus 100, you know. Um, so we'll be reaching out with what we need or types so um great so i'm going to move on just again because we've about got we have about 15 minutes and a lot to do uh i added the parks and conservation storybook onto the agenda the purpose of that was to highlight that we are also separately working on the storybook um and i think once we get through well we need to, we, we need a subcommittee who's interested in leading that effort um I don't think we need to hammer out those details today. I think, you know, first we get through the fact sheet and then we focus on the storybook, but I just wanted to, to highlight that the storybook is coming. And that is really where it gives us a lot of opportunity to have details and nuance and not the, not the fact sheet. I did want to preserve some time today because there are, uh, is a moment to celebrate. The town council approved our six million dollar land bond uh, recommendation for the November ballot, um, and I included the full language that will be on the. I think it, I think it's the full language that'll be on the ballot. It's quite long. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm hoping it fits on one page. And one of the reasons why it's particularly lengthy is that council endorsed the bond and recommends its passage. And that will be printed on the ballot.
And it is my understanding that that doesn't happen very often and that it's possible that the school was the first time. Good. Okay. So next item is that the town council also um, approved that the Alger Hall sale proceeds be placed back in the land acquisition reserve fund. So that's $399,970. I think it's $30 less than uh, what came out of the land bond fund. And we, we PCLB, the, that money goes back into the land acquisition reserve fund and is now available for um, applicants to apply for, I believe that that is where we're at. So it, I think I, we don't have the exact number but I think we're talking around four hundred fifteen thousand dollars right now available. I apologize, I didn't hand those out this morning or send them. Norm just sent it to me while I was here. Okay. Um, is that sale closed? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So right now, your ending balance with interest earned is four hundred and twenty-four thousand forty-four dollars and twelve cents. And I will. I'll make sure that gets to Tody. I just got that as I was traveling back until probably I'll get that as part of the agenda packet loaded back up. And Todd, that does not, there's still a small, small in terms of relative to 424,000. There's also, there's still the floating amount that we don't know how to access, right? Or sorry, not that we don't know how to access. It's not clear whether PCLB has the authority to grant those oh, funds, yeah. to recommend granting those funds yeah yeah I'm to hang one second and look at this that doesn't include that right i just don't have it in front of me so i'm assuming that's yeah. just interest but not 100 percent sure oh uh, position fund no that does include that 22 dollars okay. okay yeah so we had, we had a remaining of, now again i'm simplifying the number thirteen thousand nine hundred one sixty four cents <laughs> and then you have the just over twenty two thousand for land acquisition fund. You have forty two forty four in earned interest. You have seventeen ninety four oh nine in earned interest, and then the Alger Hall proceeds of three hundred ninety nine nine hundred seventy dollars, totaling four hundred twenty four thousand forty four dollars and twelve cents. So it is in there for your acquisition and approval if people apply. Okay, so I just wanted to update that we have been under the we've been moving forward as though there's a, there's less the 13,000 but we there are now uh, 424,000 that could be applied for or could be applied for and we could recommend I just put it on your screen I, I could have done that a second ago I don't know why I didn't do it um, again really small but yeah so there's the numbers at the bottom there that show that total so so I just wanted to highlight that because that is a change, is a recent change. And um, I also wanted to highlight that starting on January 1st, committee and board members um, who have, this is my understanding, and Todd, please uh, let me know if I'm wrong, who have served more than three consecutive terms. Um, I don't know what to call it. Um, you can't serve more than three consecutive terms. Um, so I don't know what the process for that is going to be. Um, and yeah, I do know it'll I, affect I, I this board. I didn't really hear about it until that night they approved it. As far as the language, Karen's here, she can update it. I do have our who's expiring what. I do know that there's also some conversation with staff trying to figure out how how this is going to work with some of our people that are terming off there's some concerns so i think that'll be coming to, back to council a little bit with some of the concern um because we're losing a lot of knowledge and history um with, with some of these so anyways that's to be determined but karen may chime in i i absolutely welcome karen to chime in um, we have one more meeting which uh this year which i believe is scheduled for november so if folks are terming off, we might have to discuss how to preserve knowledge um, because this is a, a longstanding committee. So I, I want to make sure 
that we um, formalize a process for for um, recording that that knowledge because right. we won't so have the opportunity to ask. 1231-24, Rachel will term out. And on 1231-25, uh, Doug and Sue term out. Okay, yeah, so, so I'm to... happy to talk about Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, no. So this is actually how like the planning board is structured and town councilors is you serve three, three year terms and then you take a year off. Um, there's a lot of discussion behind um, bringing in new people with different knowledge, maybe sometimes timing people out and seeing if they want to bring their knowledge to a different committee within the town. Also, if there are no applications for that current committee, the person would continue to sit on it. Um, you know, I just, we also hope that just because someone isn't serving on a committee, they don't want to continue to contribute to, you know, the town and things like that. I'm a little unclear on how the transition is going to be. I know, obviously, um, I'm not sure if we're going to suddenly have a bunch of vacancies come January. Um, and I think that's one of the details that I, I just wasn't really quite clear on how that's going to happen. Right now, I don't know what's going on with this board or any of the other boards um, who's timing out. But with that in mind, you know, hearing if you are timing out on this board, you can now see that there may be other boards that are going to have openings that you could apply to. And I think that was one of the reasonings behind it. Um, I know it's a little bit different and tough, but I can tell you from being on a board you sometimes have people who have been sitting on there forever who are just on it, where you have people sitting in the queue that would actually bring a lot more knowledge to that board, but it's also sometimes hard to replace them. It kind of streamlines maybe mixing it up and being able to have new residents come in and bring different perspectives. Um, so, you know, if there are issues, we're happy to hear feedback. We've been discussing it in the Rules and Policies Committee. We've had a couple meetings about it. We've had two town, town council meetings addressing it. So we've had some time for everyone to process it. I haven't heard much negative feedback. I understand there's gonna be some repercussions from it, but um, we'll wait to hear more, I guess, because I can see that there's probably gonna be a little bit of a transition here. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Maggie's got her hand up. So yeah. you're talking about nine years. Correct. And then asking people to take a, a, a year off. Correct. That doesn't, nine years is a long time. That doesn't sound uh, unreasonable at all to me. It, but. it is. And I, it, it is a very big, long commitment. But then you also have people who become experts on certain committees. And I appreciate not wanting to lose them. What? Well, I, I actually have a Rick question. Sort of question on the, in the room. Is, is that language that's in the agenda the actual language of the rule? Yeah, I took it from the, yeah, sorry. I'll, yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Generally, yeah. So I'm a little bit unclear about that. Does that mean that on January 25th, of this coming year, I'm done here because I've served more than three terms. And the, the way that is worded, it says that I can't serve more than three terms starting January 25th. So my, my term otherwise would have ended in 2026, but I just, I need to know, yeah, no. did my calendar just free up? The next year, <laughs> I'm hearing your specific thing. I I feel like I'm, and that's where I think maybe Ty can help probably quickly clarify for, quicker than I can about if people are going to be filling out the terms that they're currently on. So, what, the way so if you're sitting in the middle of a term, I can't see us removing you. But I think yeah. maybe when your term is coming up, that's when you're we're going to be like, oh, actually, Rick's like been on hundred for twelve years, so you've reached that limit. Um, and I apologize, because that is something that we should 100% clarify on. I do feel like it was discussed. Yeah, from what I heard in the discussion at town council meeting, when I followed up with my specific question, that is the way. And that's why when I asked, in this case, Rachel's term is up 1231-24. Right. 
she would not be, if this was her, again, her third term, she would not be allowed. Anybody else, so an example, Doug and Sue, their terms end in 2012 or 25, they're allowed to finish their terms, but then not, anybody's allowed to finish their existing term, and if they've served three consecutive terms, would not be allowed to apply, I guess, so you would be done in 26. If you, you're you three terms in, you finish your term, you'd be done in 26. I think the question I have, and I'm making notes as I hear more from different committee members and different groups that I serve, the question that I have is that the way the process works right now, Karen, is that Toady, I think it's Toady, it may be Kristen, um, reaches out to members that are starting to term out. So you would normally get a notification, hey, your term ends and I'll use Rachel's example. She normally get a, a notice that says, hey, your term ends 12, 31, 24, let's say in November or, or October, would you like to be reconsidered for applicants? And then at that point, any candidate says yes or no. I guess what I'm confused, what we'll need clarification, Karen, from on the front is, you know, um, the idea of being able to sit in that seat until it's filled by somebody else, but your term has expired. So that transition that, you know, it's either, I think we need to put a date in there of like, if, if we don't have applicants by 12, one of 24, the applicant could put their name back in there, continue to serve, you know what I mean? Or something to be able to just, how do we solidify that transition period? Cause I'd hate to have a seat empty if we have nobody when we have a willing candidate to serve. You know, but not kick them out when we get somebody else. Like, hey, thanks for giving me the extra three months. So, how do we deal with that transition period on a timeline? I guess we would just need to clarify a little bit. Just and to I think we're a little tricky in that we meet quarterly, but we also meet as we receive applications. So it could actually affect our business and it, business. Uh, it could affect our quorum to make recommendations if we have empty seats because our meetings sort of can come up unexpectedly in ways that other boards have, you know, they meet every third Tuesday. We, you know, we don't do that because we have our quarterly meetings and then we have our meetings related to applications. We should get further and, clarification on that. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. But I think we'll hear different comments and try to get all the answers back. Okay. Um, and this board has very long serving members. So also um, preserving some of the historical knowledge, as I mentioned, will probably be part of our 2025. Um, which is crazy to say 2025. Anyway, uh, Doug, are there any updates on the ad hoc open space committee? Uh, no, there are not. Uh, they're moving forward, uh, continuing to collect data via the via online, um, the online questionnaires that people can fill out. The, I say questionnaires, but the process that is online. So I recommend to anyone to push people to get online and, uh, and under the open space ad hoc committee uh, site and uh, fill out form if you haven't, um, because it's how they're collecting the data at this point. Um, and then ultimately we'll be pulling that together to look at the various types of open space and the the focus on those types of open space that people have. Um, there's, I'd just like to reiterate that, you know, the. The, the committee is not identifying open space. They are identifying the importance of open space mm -hmm. to the in various types. So that report is not going to be a report of open space available. It's a report of interest in maintaining open space of various types. But it will, Doug, if you can clarify for me, the way I understand it is it will identify the amount of acres presently the town has an open space. Oh, yeah. Not which process, because I think for us, when we're doing some of our work and other projects um, and then reaching a goal of 30 for 30 by 30, it's 
we'll know it. Okay, here's the number we have, and then we'll actually have the next benchmarks, which is it'll be an updated version of that because we've had multiple versions. Yep. The updated yep. version. I think there'll be more detail and definitely we've seen before in the mapping. Um, you know, trying to um because we've we've relied almost exclusively on uh land trust mapping of these things. And this is going to be really addressing some of those other pieces that are kind of out there. Great parts of developments or whatever. Um, hopefully, I mean that's. I I do think there'll be some really quality mapping. Okay, thank you. When do you anticipate that being done? Uh, well, there. I mean, it's supposed to be done mid December. They're supposed to have a final. This December. Yep. Yeah. Yes. There should be some. You should be able to see some preliminary stuff. No, I hope so. November. Great, right, thank you. So our next uh, meeting is November 14th. So we will be finalizing the handout electronically. So, right? Um, yes. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll be, we'll be, we have the numbers subject to a few confirmations and then uh, we'll have a draft to review. And i um, looking forward to that. And then we'll, we'll finalize that electronically if there are agenda items for the November 14th meeting, let me know. I do think a big part of that will be based on the outcome of <laughs> the election um, and and uh, meaning whether or not there are $6 million available um, for projects. And then, like I said, I think it's the preservation of the knowledge uh, that this board has. And a big part of that will be the storybook. So I think that that actually dovetails nicely in that we are going to codify some of some of that knowledge in the storybook. But we will, so, pending clarification. Gotcha, so vote results and discussion, preservation of knowledge and then storybook, which kind of goes hands in hand, but it will be the three big topics. Okay. Unless we have an application. <laughs> right. Karen, can you just um, clarify so this land bond is going to be brought to the voters. There's a fire truck being brought to the voters. And isn't there a, a third it, one? Uh, cameras. Body cameras. Body cameras. Okay. There's so three. Those are the only three um, town-based bonds that will come to the voters in, in November? Correct. Okay. I know, there, I know there's state bonds, of course, but the form is okay. And I believe that the land bond is question number three. I think so. Uh, motion to adjourn. So just uh, 14 oh, sorry. a.m. and I will confirm location. I, I put there, we've been in A or B, but I'll confirm that. But just for scheduling in the public, it will be the 14th at 10 a.m. location to be dated. What's election election and there will be a link. Well, and we'll also have a Zoom option. Yes, it is. Uh, okay. Do we have a motion? Move to adjourn. Uh, second. All those in favor. <laughs> I was waiting on you. I didn't want to. <laughs> have a great day. November. <laughs> Bye. I'll stop sharing somehow here. We're still live, so pause.